Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's final video. We're going to have a look at whether for the next 10 to 14 days, for today's final video, day 10 will take us to the 20th of January and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles because maybe we'll around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into early February. I should get like that for you in a moment. Just to say about the first video scene was the uh, 6 a.m. upload. And we've also released the EC 30 day forecast. Please check out those two videos if you'd like to. Do that. Like, share, subscribe on videos. And thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, we're going to start off with the uh, situation at 10 HPA over Saturday at Amanor Pole. It looks like we begin to warm things up a little bit at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. So the grey line is trend line. The black line shows where we've, where, where we've been and where we are uh, with temperatures at 10 HPA at this time of the year, at this point of the year. So uh, right now it should be around here, somewhere around minus 65. We're actually somewhere around minus 75 now. That has come up from being around minus 85 um, a few days ago. So it looks like we've reached the peak of the cold um, in terms of the... Uh, <coughs> of the uh, stratospheric temperature at 10 HPA. Uh, looks like we've reached the, the peak of that. Um, temperatures are beginning to lift up. However, we are still colder than average. If we go a little, li a little bit lower down to 30 HPA, uh, we're lifting up there ever so slightly as well. We're still very cold there. Uh, we're under minus 80. And uh, we should be somewhere around here, like uh, minus 73, something like that. So, uh, very, very cold. Stratosphere temperature at both 10 and 3 HPA, but starting to tick up ever so slightly. Uh, this is the latest uh, couple of uh, forecasts for the temperature 10 HPA from the GFS. So, uh, have a quick look at that. We've got a minor warming coming up over Siberia over the next few days. However, the cold uh, temperatures in the strategy of the blue and purple curves may continue over the Arctic and over North Pole through the next week or so. Into the extended range, we get another quite significant warming of the strategy there around 21st of January, again, over Siberia. Um, and that kind of fizzles out, though, uh, but it does displace the blue and purple curves a little bit towards the European side of the uh, Arctic. However, no sign of an SSW there. This is how the GFS 6Z, the uh, latest run, is looking. Again, there's that modest warming of the stratosphere of Siberia in the uh, next couple of days. That's like the opening salvo warming. As we go into the extended range, again, we get the secondary warming around the 21st of January. Uh, and that's how we're going to get to the end. So no, uh, no uh, big warming on the two GFS operation runs today. Actually backed off that uh, a little bit. How are the ensembles looking? This is the control run. Um, it looks a little bit like that. This is ensemble member <coughs> number one. The cost back today, everyone. Uh, ensemble member number one. This is a bigger warming of the stratosphere there. Over Siberia the last week of January, ensemble member number two looks like that. Again, a little bit uh, toned down with the warming today. Ensemble member number three, that was not really going for a major warming either. Ensemble member number four, not really going for it. Ensemble member number five, what's that one doing? So, quite a significant one of strategy taking place, but not reaching SSW. Uh, levels there with a lot of these ensemble members to down. Ensemble member number six, that one's not going for it either. Ensemble member number seven, that one's a little bit stronger with the uh, warming there. Uh, ensemble member number eight going uh, like that, so that one's not really going for it either. Ensemble member number nine, also it backed up a little bit, doesn't it? Backed off a little bit. Ensemble member number nine looks like that. Ensemble member number ten. Uh, it's looking like that. That goes for a major warming still. Ensemble member number 10. Ensemble member number 11. Uh, looks like that. That one's backed off. Ensemble member number 12. There it is. Looks like that. That one's backed off too. Ensemble member number 13. Um, I'm quite a significant one, but not an SSW anywhere near. Not like anywhere near an SSW. Ensemble member uh, 13 looks like that. Ensemble member 14. That one still goes with quite a significant warming. Ensemble member number 15. Again, that one's going for quite a significant warming. Ensemble member number 16. It's backed up a little bit. Ensemble member number 17. 
Uh, that's backed off a little bit. I'll swap over to 18, looks like that. That's going for quite a significant warming still in the last week of January. I'll swap over to 19, looks like that. Also going for quite a significant warming. Ensemble member number 20. You like that? Ensemble member number 21. There we go. That was backed off too. Ensemble member number 22. That's going for quite a significant warming. Ensemble member number 23. <laughs> Looks like that. That was backed off a bit. Ensemble member number 24. Uh, significant warming on that one. Ensemble member... Number 25, that was backed off. Ensemble member number 26, significant warming with that one. Ensemble member number 27, it's backed off. Ensemble member number 28, backed off. Ensemble member number 29, significant warming. Ensemble member number 13. Quite a significant warming on that one too. So definitely have been a little bit of a road back, I think, from the GFS operations and also the ensembles today. Seeing, uh, seeing a significant warming of the stratosphere in the final week, 10 days of January. There are still some ensemble members that are going for it. It remains a slow burner. We should wait and see, uh, you know, what happens there. ECMWF extended data looks like this in terms of stratospheric temperature. So it looks a bit similar live stream last night, but I thought we'd cover it again in today, 10 to 14 there. So uh, this is for week one, temperature anomaly at 10 HPA from the 9th to 16th of January. Those deep blue colours there, indicative of the cold temperatures at 10 HPA in stratosphere over the Arctic Avenue path that we currently have. That is week two. Again, my blue can continue, although it is a warming that starts to take place across southern Europe and in towards Siberia as well. Beginning to stretch out the polar vortex at its roots. See the way those blue colours are being stretched there. A week three is the 23rd uh, to the 30th of January. It looks like a significant warming is taking place over Siberia then, displacing the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere. Over 10 HP more towards the Atlantic side of the Arctic. Week 4, get rid of those blue colours altogether. That's the 30th of January to 6th of February. Looks a little bit like a sun stratosphere warming, although as these are anomalies to average, we can't necessarily say that that is an SSW that's taking place there. But it does look a little bit indicative of one. And then through weeks 5 and also week 6, we keep temperature above average at uh, 10 HPA in the stratosphere. So it looks like there's an SSW that's going on there within the extended uh, ECM. Far as zone of winds are concerned, zone of wind forecast uh, looks like this, uh, very, very, very latest forecast. So these are the ensemble members that are going for reversal of zone of winds at 10 HPA. Um, that is what the gold standard is to say you've had some stratospheric warming. So, um, there the ensemble members go for a reversal of zone winds at the end of January and into the beginning of February. These ensemble members here are going for a weakening of zone winds, and these ensemble members up here are keeping zone winds at a very strong level. Of course, currently the zone wind is very strong, almost at record breaking strong levels. Compared to the previous update, there are actually fewer members of the ECM on top of plume that are going for a reverse of zone winds. That's the uh, that's the number of um, on top members that are going for a reversal of zone winds at 10 HPA on the 5th of January update. And uh, the, this is how many we have on the 9th of January update. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think we can say that the uh, ECM has backed off the idea of a reversal of zone winds at the end of January and into the beginning of February. However, there are still enough ensemble members going for it that makes it of interest and makes it of a possibility. So it remains something I'm going to keep an eye on. Uh, and uh, we've just got, we've got to wait and see where this is going, I'm afraid. I still think we're going to get an SSW this winter. Um, so let's just wait and see. But it looks like the end of January, um, the idea of an SSW then possibly has, uh, has uh, they're backed away a little bit from that. Even though they're never going for it 100% anyway. But I think, you know, they've moved away from that idea slightly 
over the past day or two with these two models. We shall keep you updated. Century Temperature still has not updated at Hadley. We still only have CT provisional to the 3rd of January. So we'll move on to the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble. So the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Edinburgh. Starting off very mild at the moment. Let's see the upper air temperature is about average over the next uh, few days to the middle part of January. And then we've got a cooler interval coming here, a cooler interlude as you go through the third week of January. Looks like going a little bit cold on average. So a few days of colder weather coming up from the weekend into next week, possibly a recovery in the temperature as we get into the last week of uh, January. Um, uh, Precipitation-wise, just going to be regular precipitation spikes really from beginning to end. So it looks like there's going to be plenty of precipitation. And in this cooler interval, in the third week of January, um, though that precipitation might be wintry, let's have a look at snow roam. So that was quite encouraging for Edinburgh to see some snow sometime around the middle part of January. There's quite a lot of snow spikes there. Uh, for Edinburgh. Um, and even to the last week of January, there are a few snow spikes as well, not much doing uh, before that. If we go further south, Kettering, we can see that even there, there's a possibility of a little bit of snow perhaps around the middle part of uh, January, although obviously less so than it's the case for Edinburgh. And then as far as Cardiff is concerned, even there, there could be a little bit of snow around uh, 16th to the 18th of January, somewhere around there. So possibly we might get our first flakes of the year coming up uh, next week. We'll keep an eye on that. Temperature anomalies from the 18th of January. Going to be above average in the south. A little bit cooler than average up in the north. Precipitation anomalies from the 18th of January. Wetter than normal. This is Wimpler Matt from EarthNollSchool.net. Shows that we're bringing in another area of low pressure today at the moment. We're in a very mild southwest wind. We will find those winds turning into the west, though, uh, as we go into the next uh, few hours. So uh, we'll get rid of the exceptionally mild temperatures we currently got. I'll replace them with something a little bit more sensible by tonight. Tomorrow we'll feel a bit cooler. Although still relatively mild. Right, let's go through the chart data. Maybe so let you can make your runs with midnight on Friday. Low pressure being lots of wet and windy weather in from off the Atlantic. We keep uh, low pressure coming into the weekend as well. Further wet and windy weather uh, on the way through Saturday. Into Sunday, a slightly colder northwesterly wind starts to get going. And then this trough pushes through. On Monday, that actually turns wind into the north. So this is where things start to get a little bit colder into the third week of uh, January. That's how we look as well as we get to the UK Met Euro to midnight on Tuesday under a little transient ridge and a northerly wind, so it looks quite cold. Uh, and with this area of low pressure about to run into that cold weather, maybe that's where some uh, wintry possibilities could lie. Icon, again, we have lots of low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. On Friday and into weekend as well, plenty of wet midwinds to come. And as low pressure pushes eastwards through the weekend, we find colder air digging in from the north, initially into the northern half of the country, and then coming further southwards across the whole country through the course of Monday. So midnight Tuesday, we're all looking quite cold there with winds in from the north. This next area of low pressure up here looks like it's about to run in. Will it go in that direction? Or will it go in that direction? If it goes northwest, southeast on the northern and eastern side of the road, that's where the uh, prospect of a little bit of snow could come from. Uh, Jeff has midnight run. Again, wet and windy through into the weekend. And then uh, a little bit colder through the early part of next week as winds turn into the north. Then it's low pressure digs in from off the Atlantic. So that brings the risk of rain, sleet and snow across the country with it. Low pressure pushing eastwards and we pull wind back into the north through the middle part of next week. So we go back into the north midweek next week. And quite cold then. For the next day, the road pressure rolls in by Friday and turns wind back into west, which of course is a mild wind direction. In my extended range, mild, wet, windy, really, right until uh, 26th of January, when we're probably in something a little bit colder from the northwest. GFS 6Z, again, looking very unsettled over the uh, next few days and turning colder into the end of weekend. This area of low pressure rain coming into that quite cold air for the early part of next week could deliver some wintry prospects, particularly so for more northern areas. Back into northerly winds there, 
on Wednesday before low pressure comes rolling in and reintroduces milder weather around day 10. And uh, we head on to the next day, looking relatively mild with low pressure back in off the Atlantic. If you enjoyed the video, please can you like, subscribe, thank you so much everybody for doing that. And why not drop a comment let's say what you think about this and all of our videos. We have just passed 15.3k subscribers. Thank you so much everybody for pushing on now to 15.4k. GM, again, looks very wet and windy on Friday and into weekend too. As that low pressure clears away into the open next week, we can turn into the north. It turns colder through the early part of next week. This low coming in from the northwest, where it is on Tuesday, to the south of Iceland, where it is on Wednesday, somewhere in the North Sea. Um, that's running into cold air and has even colder air following a lump high, so there's some wintry prospects. In the back row, potentially, uh, through the middle part of next week, it's midnight Thursday, into a direct northerly. So this is strong with the northerly wind compared to any of the other model output that we've seen so far today. Um, bring some actually very cold air in from uh, the polar regions. And we get to day 10, and we're still in that northerly, although it looks like we're probably about to cut it off um, any time beyond that. But at day 10, that's looking very cold, pushing by about 10 Celsius ice <laughs> through the country. I think the GA is probably a cold outlier uh, there. But, um, you know, it, waits, it remains to be seen just how winter it's going to get uh, next week. Will it be like just one or two days, or could it be... A full week of quite cold weather. Uh, we'll wait and see. ECM, uh, again, looking mild wet with you on Friday and into weekend two. And then as that low pressure transfers eastwards through the weekend, we start to bring colder air in from the north. So uh, the ECM also has quite a strong northerly through the early part of next week. Certainly stronger than the GFS output. Uh, with that, not as cold as the GM, though, of course, with that northerly. And then the low pressure comes into that cold air from the uh, northwest, so a mix of rain, sink, and snow. Uh, with that area of low pressure, that transfers into the North Sea winds, go back into the north again on Thursday. So that looks pretty wintry through the middle part of next week. And then by Friday, high pressure ridging in from the southwest with uh, a big warm sector waiting through here. That looks like it probably move in and give us a mild weekend for the weekend of the 21st to 22nd of January. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tobetshow.com. Plenty of rain at the moment. Um, and we're going for the next few days. There could be more heavy rain, particularly across England and Wales uh, on a Thursday. Into the weekend, yes, very unsettled weather continuing. Cold up some snow by Saturday up in the northern part of the coach as well. And there we go into uh, the rest of the weekend with wintry showers in the north and the west. And then in comes that area of road pressure from Iceland for the early part of next week. Back to the quite a snow event. Anywhere from the Midlands north was getting quite a lot of snow with that area of road pressure. Uh, cold rain right down in the south, of course. Uh, as that gets through, we're left with uh, plenty of wintry showers, snow showers and whatnot coming in on those northerly winds before things dry out by day 10 as rich of high pressure builds in um, from the southwest. Unfortunately, we have not got the options on the table in the ECM ensembles today from the other side of Met Office, but not updated. So the last thing we'll show you is uh, the CFSB2. So these are 500 millibar, high to is breaking down into weekly periods. The first week period will take us from the 10th through to 16th of January. The coming week will be dominated by low pressure. Very unsettled week to come. Of course, week two, going to be the 17th to 23rd of January. Top of low pressure in over Scandinavia. Bridge of high pressure in the Atlantic with some jet stream on a bit of a northwest southeast alignment. So it's a bit colder and it's still quite unsettled. Week three is going to be the 24th to the 30th of January. High pressure centre to the north of Scotland. Around that, we bring in winds from an easterly direction. So turning drier and colder there, potentially. In the final week of January, that could be quite a cold area of high pressure. Certainly enough to produce some some too, sir. And uh, if there's enough of an easterly flow, maybe even bring some snow showers into southern and eastern areas. And then week four goes mild. This is the 31st of January to 6th of February. High pressure 
shifting eastwards, low pressure out to the Atlantic. That will bring the wind back into the south, so that will be a milder wind direction. Although it wouldn't take that much of an adjustment to be so much so like south southeast winds, which would be quite cold coming in from off the continent. Certainly, again, there could be some frost and fog uh, with that. And we're done. If you enjoyed the video, then please like, subscribe, and show you everybody about why not drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to your friends and family back down as well. This it's amazing, it's incredible. I mean, thank you so much, everybody, for doing that uh, for us. Right, just a tell it's coming up tomorrow then. Uh, so you start on 6 a.m. upload. We're going to have the USA uh, forecast for the next six weeks. Extended USA forecast tomorrow. And if all of that wasn't enough, we will be live streaming at 6 p.m. We will live stream. I'll take the 14 day out, uh, so I shall see you live tomorrow evening. You enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and for this video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.